times have you sat down to complete a task and then life gets in the way? An email pops up that you just have to quickly read and respond to. A Facebook post dings and you stop to read a super funny teaching meme. Or even with no prompt at all, you suddenly get it into your head that the laundry needs to be done or the dishes need to be done or some other small task needs to be completed and you can just do it really quickly and then get back to whatever you were doing. Three hours later, with maybe some small tasks completed, your main task that you sat down to complete is still there, staring back at you, incomplete. In this video, I'll give you three strategies that you can use to make sure that when you sit down to get something done, you get it done. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll give you my bonus tip that I personally always use to make sure that I complete the task that I set down to complete. My name is Marcella Cooper and I'm excited to share with you my insights, reflections and practical strategies that have helped me to develop into a more effective and productive teacher. If you're a teacher who's interested in improving your teaching methods, gaining different perspectives on ways of teaching, and reflecting on what impacts your teaching practice, you're in the right place. Make sure to hit that like button if you find this video interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified whenever I post content just like this. Let's get started. Let's face it, we're all busy but teachers are a special kind of busy. While other people may think that teachers just teach, we know that we're busy lesson planning, researching topics so that we can remain current and relevant for our students, constantly refreshing our understanding of an ever-changing curriculum, and improving our own professional knowledge through self-study or organized courses. On top of that, we're collaborating with our colleagues, coordinating with our department for meetings and deadlines, leading extracurricular activities or preparing for events like curriculum night or parent-teacher conferences. And on top of that, we have our personal lives that we have to balance. Teachers are busy people that need to get things done. The most powerful technique that I use is the Pomodoro technique. The Pomodoro technique is a really simple way to trick your mind into getting started. Basically, you work for 25 minute sessions with a five minute break after each session. After four Pomodoro sessions, you can take a longer break if you want. Personally, I use the app Be Focused to help me time my Pomodoro sessions, but any simple timer will do. I've included the link to the app in the description box below. Let me know in the comment section if you've used this app or if you use a different app to help you with your timings. Based on my own personal experience, getting started is often the hardest part. Once I've agreed with myself to work for 25 minute sessions, I often work past the five minute break. And yes, that's allowed. You don't have to be a slave to the 25 minute, five minute protocol, but if you know that your task is going to take a few hours to complete, I strongly recommend taking those five minute breaks. I like the Be Focused app because it allows me to label my work periods. I like to keep track of how much time I spend on lesson planning, my YouTube channel, studying Japanese, and so on. Then I can look back and see patterns of my work. You can also see that it says zero out of four for today. I've made a commitment to myself that every day I'm going to try to do four Pomodoro sessions. Now I might do more than that, but I've basically made a commitment to myself that every day I'm going to work intensely for two hours. So my second tip has to do with my commitment to myself to do at least four Pomodoro sessions a day. And that is to block off time specifically for working intensely. Personally, I use Microsoft Outlook calendar, but again, any calendar, digital or print will do. I color code my calendar. So for example, my classes are in yellow, my appointments are in dark blue, and you can see that my work periods are in light blue. During the day, I try to block off four 30 minute sessions, and that includes my 25 minutes of intense working and a five minute break. During the day, these sessions are school related, but I often schedule Pomodoro sessions in the evening if I know that I want to do personal tasks that need to be done. So why do I block off time for intense work periods? 
there are some days where I genuinely, looking at my calendar, I don't have two hours to spare for working intensely because of meetings that I have, classes that are scheduled, and other commitments that may already be scheduled for that day. So that helps me plan realistic deadlines for the things that I need to do. Setting up work periods also helps me set work-life boundaries. So I know that if I work intensely for the four sessions during the school day, that should leave me time in the evening to spend time with my husband, to exercise, to go out with my friends, to do my personal tasks. We all know as teachers that teaching can be a 24 seven job if you let it. For me, setting an intention to do the work is actually my first step in doing the task. I start the day knowing when I will be working intensely and when I can devote my time to more shallow tasks, such as checking my emails or doing other tasks that don't require me to work intensely. Do I always stick with my plan? Of course not. Colleagues will stop by, students will need help unexpectedly, things come up. However, I have noticed a pattern in my scheduling in that the mornings usually are more interruption free. So for me, my strategy is that if I know I need to get something done, I'll try to plan morning work periods because those are the periods that are less likely to be interrupted by things that just come up naturally. So we've agreed to ourselves that we're going to work intensely for four Pomodoro sessions in a day. We've scheduled them in our calendar and now we're sitting down and we're ready to get to work. Of course, there will be distractions. And like I said, sometimes those distractions can't be avoided. However, for the most part, I believe, most distractions don't have to be dealt with that very minute. And so what I use is a distraction journal. In this journal, which can be any random notebook, whenever a non-urgent distraction pops up, just write it down. Then in your five minute break, or better yet, after your scheduled sessions, you can decide how to respond to it. For example, as you're working, a non-urgent email pops up, jot it down into your book. Or an idea might pop into your head that you need to buy milk before the end of the day. Jot it down. Basically, only allow yourself about 30 seconds away from your task to write something quickly down and then get right back to the task. Every time you open that email to just do a quick read and respond, or every time that you get up away from your task just to do something small, you'll be right back. It's just one more distraction that takes you away from your main task. The result is you'll feel like you are working on that same one task for hours and hours when you really could have gotten it finished in one or two Pomodoro sessions if you were working intensely. So if you're still watching, thank you. This is my bonus tip that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So for me, working on only one task at a time really helps me to work intensely and get all my tasks done. In the past, I thought maybe I can multitask. For example, during the time that I was planning a lesson, I might also be putting together the unit and at the same time fielding emails as they popped up. I ended up not only dragging out the main task that I originally sat down to do, but all my other tasks as well. What I've learned to do instead is to batch my tasks. So for example, in my first Pomodoro session, I might focus on just creating the lesson plans that I need for that week. Then in my second Pomodoro session, I'll get up out of my seat and start doing the chores, the household chores that I need to do, or maybe the things, the small things that I need to do in my classroom, like putting together a visual board for my class. Then in my third Pomodoro session, I might return back to the lesson planning that I was originally doing. So I'm still doing one task at a time. However, I'm not doing them at the same time. And for me, breaking it up from lesson planning and one session and then doing something else in the next session, that for me is enough of variety so that I don't fall into this 
black hole of marking for hours or doing the same thing for hours that might be a little painful for some people and definitely is sometimes painful for me. I included this as a bonus tip because I know it really works for me, but I do personally know some colleagues who prefer to just go straight on with one task for an hour, an hour and a half, however long it takes, and then they can move on. And that's the best productivity system for them. So my advice is choose the best productivity system that works for you. It's different for everyone. Feel free to comment below. Do you prefer to work on one task for a really long time or do you prefer to break it up like I just described? So like I said, everyone has different strategies that works for them. I hope the tips that I provided here will be of some use for you. Let me know in the comments if you've used any of the tips that I've talked about or if you're thinking about it or how it's worked for you. I'd love to hear about how you stay focused, whether you're teaching in the classroom or via the internet. Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to check out my blog. I've put in the link in the description box below. If you found this video helpful to you, the idea is interesting, please press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified whenever I post videos, new videos with content like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.